The plan today is to show you around the Tono Colonial in Santo Domingo, Republica Dominicana. Uh, there are some beautiful streets, some great architecture, flowers. Um, it is Christmas, so a lot is closed, but there's a lot to see, a lot to walk by. People are out. Let's get to it. We're here walking around the Faro a Colón. Y como es Navidad, las calles están aquí, completamente llenas. Pero sí, es muy bonito. Me dijeron que el Faro a Colón está cerrado. Um, so it's closed, but I mean, everywhere there's just music and noise. Uh, it seems like Christmas is a party here, whereas where I'm from in the U.S., it's, everything is closed and everyone's with their families. Let's check it out. Let's see what we got going on here. Looks like there are some statues inside. It kind of looks like a church. But, oh yeah, you can definitely get in. Museo Faro Colón. Directly behind me is the house of Diego Colón, who was the son of Christopher Columbus. Uh, it says on the little plaque that this house was uh, constructed in 1511 and as you can see it is immense absolutely enormous um, it's kind of at like the northeast edge of the uh, Zona Colonial here in Santo Domingo but yeah it's very impressive and there's a lot of restaurants here I'll, I'll show you the plaza around the big Christmas tree it's uh, it's a really cool place this building over my left shoulder is the Museo de las Casas Reales, uh, which as it was described to me is basically a national archive, has a lot of Dominican historical documents, and it's a very, very old building. It reminds me of something that I would see in Spain. I am now walking through the Pantheon in Santo Domingo, which is where a lot of famous Dominicans are buried. Uh, I guess it's, it's like the Pantheon in Rome as well. I'm starting to see some similarities. Wow. Oh, there's a there's a mural up here on the ceiling that is incredible. Check this out. Now on the wall are famous Dominicans who I, I guess are buried right in this wall. I'm walking down Calle Las Damas, which is one of the oldest streets in the Western Hemisphere. This is where Diego Colon's wife, Maria de Toledo, according to what I just read, her friends used to walk up and down the street and it was lined with beautiful houses and just mansions everywhere. And now, something I didn't realize about the Caribbean and kind of Latin America is the amount of history from both the old world and Europe and the new world uh, that is today the Americas, just how they mix here is really incredible. It's a, it's a beautiful place and if you appreciate kind of the old buildings and the stone uh, along with the new ideas of like the, the new ways of the Caribbean and their culture and the Dominicans have, it's, it's really a terrific place to just spend a few days, especially during Christmas when it's cold back home. Behind me is the main cathedral in Santo Domingo. Right in front of me is a statue to Cristobal Colon. Behind that, which is also in front of me, is Calle Conde, which is one of the other big horizontal streets that runs through uh, the Zona Colonial in Santo Domingo. It's, I've got to say, I was just thinking about this, this is way prettier than I ever expected Santo Domingo to be. It's, it's a wonderful mix of old and new, of people just out in the streets, the weather is great all the time. I, I did not expect to like this city as much as I am right now. So I ate at that restaurant over there the other night. Uh, I met a girl down here, we ate dinner there, it was really nice, she showed me around a little bit. And like I said, it's just a, it's just a wonderful place. People drinking beers in the street, it's Caribbean life at its best. I, I do love the Caribbean lifestyle. I just left the Plaza Patriotica. I just saw the remains of the three men who helped liberate the Dominican Republic from Haiti. That was pretty cool. And now I just started it at the Malecon, which runs this is the Atlantic Ocean behind me, as you can see. And it just runs west down the city. So I'm gonna walk that until I get to, I don't know where exactly, somewhere where I have to go up north back to my Airbnb. Uh, it is a beautiful day, everyone is out. Other than all that trash in the ocean, it would be really pretty, but that's kind of gross. This is the last major thing that I've gotta see in Santo Domingo. This is the Parque Nacional Tres Ojos 
which I think are three caves, uh, although there's a sign for a fourth one. So I'm gonna walk around, check these out. Uh, it looked beautiful in the photos. It costs 200 pesos to get in, which is $4. You get down into the caves and it's immediately significantly quieter. That was the pool, which you're not allowed to swim in anymore because apparently some people died, but uh, yeah, this is, this is really cool. Oh, there's a, there's a turtle right there. You can see down to the bottom. It doesn't look very deep, maybe 15 feet, but wow, it's really impressive. It's exactly like the caves I swam in in Vietnam, except the water is pristine and blue. Very pretty, but uh, it turns out you can see the whole thing in 20 minutes and it's worth four dollars that's that's about it um i liked it i'm gonna see if there's some food but now it's time to head back into the Thona colonial and walk around aimlessly for a little bit important to remember that in santo domingo there's not a ton of things to just look at and see and do but uh the charm of this city is in the fact that it's just beautiful and the, the old town the Thona colonial is really nice um, people are friendly, it's cheap, it's easy to get around with Uber, and it's, I'm a big fan. I haven't felt unsafe at all in Santo Domingo, but I've also basically stayed to the Zona Colonial and main streets where there are a lot of people, so uh, maybe, I'm sure that's true to an extent that it's unsafe, but for me it's been fun. <laughs>